Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes. We're flying the 737-800 from Toronto to New York and it seems to have an error loading the aircraft package. Now this should be the Zeebo 737. Uh, may not be the most updated version and I think maybe what's happened is I need to get a more up-to-date version of this for because X-Plane 11 itself got updated. So well it seems to be functional enough. And we've got an Air Canada delivery. I think I might want to turn down the volume, otherwise we won't be able to hear the Apollo 12 audio properly. We'll see. Okay, I wanted to check if I've got the thrust reversers on right. Okay, that's good. Okay, except, okay, I have to do that in order to disengage. All right, that's good enough. I want to make sure I've got that on the right keys. Okay, so uh, we are going to continue with the Apollo 12 audio right now. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 6 hours and uh, 15 go. minutes. Uh, now into the flight to Apollo 12. The Apollo 12 spacecraft altitude at this time uh, 27,043.8 nautical miles above the Earth. Current velocity now reading 11,485 uh, feet per second. We understand the uh, change of shift news conference will start uh, momentarily uh, in the news center. Therefore, we'll take down the release line uh, from mission control uh, for the duration of that conference. At uh, 6 hours, uh, 14 minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston uh, signing off for now. And of course, we're going to skip the This the gap. Apollo Control Houston at uh, 6 hours uh, 37 minutes and now into the flight Apollo 12. The uh, Apollo 12 spacecraft at the present time uh, has a velocity reading of uh, 10,980 feet per second. Uh, we currently uh, register an altitude of uh, 29,549 nautical miles. During that period of time that uh, we had the release line down, uh, we have had some conversation back and forth uh, with the Apollo 12 spacecraft, uh, principally with uh, Commander Pete Conrad. And we'll play those several minutes of tape uh, for you now. 12, go ahead. Oh, I forgot to I change the flight information at the top. Dead. Sorry about that. That's affirmative, Dick. Okay. I was just wondering if you hadn't been hollering at me yet. Let me try and trim this first. 12, Houston. I like the wing flex, that's good. Go ahead, Houston. Go ahead. 12, we've been thinking about the uh, LEM checkout procedures. We'd like uh, your thoughts on uh, whether you want to go in there as soon as you finish up with the P-23. Okay, uh, we can do that. Uh, we could uh, get into PTC and then go on in there. Uh, what do you got, Mike? There we go. I guess what I'm in is, let's see, I'm in a break this down or Pete, uh, that's affirmative. We'd like to go ahead and uh, check the position of several breakers just to uh, make sure that we are getting uh, the heaters coming off and on on all of the systems as we should be. That's a good idea, and uh, we'll uh, uh, get ready to do that. Now, I think uh, what we'd like to do here is, uh, Al is, oh, I've got all the way out of my suit, but I still have to sew it. Al's working his way out of his right now while Dick's doing the p 23 so we want to get Dick unsuited. We're going to get everybody cleaned up here and get the spacecraft stowed, and uh, then we'd like to go in a limp, I think. we got plenty of that? 12, uh, that's affirmative. It sounds good. We would like to get into the LEM uh, before 8 hours uh, GET. Okay. Well, well, here we go. That's pretty quick, but again, so quick. Uh, I was wondering. 
Stand by, Chief. It's probably mainly concerned that. Oh, cabin altitude. Oops. Uh, forgot I had to do that for this. Uh, one of the reasons we want to get in there early is there's a p possibility that the ASA heater is uh, not cycling the way it should be, in which case uh, eight hours is the limit, and we ought to get a look at it before that time. Let's flatten out a bit while that catches up with us. Have to watch out no, bouncing. Standing by. Bouncing from one plane to another to remember some of the quirks. Pete, uh, I repeat, the uh, reason we'd like to get in there uh, before eight hours GET is that the ASA heater may not be cycling and the thermal limit then is uh, up about eight hours. So we'd like to get in there before eight hours and uh, check the position of that circuit breaker to make sure it hasn't popped and uh, look at the status of the system. Oh, so thermal reasons. Okay. Okay, and Pete, uh, we also have uh, the LEM uh, checkout procedure that you'll be following for the uh, going through the activation checklist, and we're ready to read that up to you anytime. You're going to have to hold it for a minute, Houston. Hey, Houston, this is 12, and I'd like to continue this last minute. 23 is not doing another trillion by just a half hour right now. Roger, Dave. Pretty much looks good from any angle. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, as you heard uh, in that uh, exchange between Capcom, uh, Ed Gibson, and uh, Commander Pete Conrad, uh, uh, we are considering uh, having uh, Commander Conrad and uh, Alan Bean lunar module pilot go into the lunar module uh, sometime prior to eight hours ground elapsed time. The uh, ASA or ASA heater referred to there, uh, ASA is an acronym for abort sensor assembly, uh, a part of the abort guidance system, uh, the gyros. Uh, this would be the heaters uh, associated with that system. At uh, 6 hours, uh, 43 minutes uh, into the flight, uh, we'll continue to monitor the air ground uh, uh, between uh, capsule communicator Ed Gibson and the Apollo 12 crew. Standing by, this is Apollo Control Houston. And once again, uh, of course, I'm not using autopilot. I'm largely uh, navigating manually uh, with a moving map. Well, Houston, go ahead. Uh, Roger, are you going to fix up our state vector? Stand by, Dick. Twelve, uh, we'll have one ready for you at about ten hours. Okay. Well, well, we're Houston. crossing back over to the United States. That's right, New York State up ahead. 12, you can go ahead and uh, hold off on the PTC and enter the LEM with your uh, present attitude. We would like you to uh, first, before you go in, check the uh, Delta P. LEM uh, CM Delta P. Give us a reading on that. And then we have a uh, series of switch and circuit breaker configuration checks. Then check the TM and the LGC. We have an abbreviation or abbreviated uh, procedures taken out of the activation checklist and we're ready to read that up to you when you're ready to copy. Delta B is the difference in pressure. The PAO probably will say that. because the LEM has not been pressurized well, yet. Well, they're working on that. Go ahead, yeah. Did you uh, get our last transmission, and uh, would you give us uh, a call when you're ready to copy the LEM checkout steps? 
To our right is Buffalo and Niagara Falls. Didn't really get a close look this time. 12, Houston. Roger, we're ready to copy those instructions you got about the uh, activities you want us to perform in the lab. Roger, I only follow. Uh, first, before you go in, we'd like you to uh, read us down the Delta P from the LEM command module. And then the abbreviated uh, procedures to go through on the activation checklist are as follows. Activation one, steps one, two, three. Activation two, step two. And on act activation three through activation nine, perform all. On activation 10, steps through 18. Activation 11, steps 1, 2, 3. Activation 12, through step 4. The comm configuration is as follows. PM, prime, prime, off, PCM, off reset, off, high. On out, Ed. On 11. Got a bad patch of water Circuit there. Breaker, panel 11. LGC Disky. Close. On activation 27. Form CDR steps 3 through 6. Activation 28 through step 7. Then it will give us a uh, verb 74 enter. Take a look at the E mod. Verb 37 enter. 06 enter and a pro you're gonna stand by light on panel 11 circuit breaker LGC disky open and then uh, continue shutting it down with uh, activation 15 steps 2 3 4 5 and activation 16 perform all that completes it See if I got it right. The first thing you want to do is read uh, the FLM Delta P before we go in. And then we start with activation one, step one, two, three. Activation two, step two. Activation three, all. And that's activation three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all of those. Step, uh, correction, activation 10, steps one through 18. Activation 11, one through three. 12, one through four. Our configuration should be, and uh, I may have missed one here. PM prime, prime, all prime. Correction, PPM, all three set high. Uh, Al, oh, Houston. shoot. <laughs> I wish when they started the plane, they really started the plane. Um, that. You know, it's uh, I I did instead of doing the manual start, I did the start with 12, engines running, but apparently ahead. that does not uh, configure it exactly we'll right. Hand it over to Goldstone. You did miss one on the uh, comm configuration. The uh, after off reset, it's off and then high, and then uh, continue with your readback. Okay, that'd be off reset and off and then high. It's CB11 LGC disk closed that. Perform activation 27, Commander Step 3 through 6. Then activation 28, Step 1 through 7. To a verb 74, enter. And a verb 37, enter 06, enter. Hold, stand by. Light will come on, of course. Panel 11, then LGC, disky open. 
And then uh, do activation 15, step 2, 3, 4, and 5, call it activation 16. That's correct, Al. I'll get up. That was Al being uh, going through the uh, lunar module checkout procedures uh, with, uh, with the ground. At uh, seven hours, uh, one minute uh, ground elapsed time, uh, we'll continue to monitor. We presently show the spacecraft velocity reading at 10,537 feet per second. Our current altitude reading, uh, 31,966 nautical miles. This is Apollo Control Houston standing by. Now, obviously, the flight plan already had uh, LEM checkout procedures listed. What they did was reshuffle them, I think, because they wanted to focus on the stuff that they were more, more concerned about, which uh, about they might not have been 12, concerned about until much later. Okay, our delta P has fallen Normally. off plus point four, and the uh, zero reading is actually uh, point one, so uh, uh, it ought to be it's fallen off about uh, three tenths. And I'm getting ready to uh, repress the left now. I repeat, we copy uh, point four and uh, point one fall off of point three. Step with uh, one step from TLC one. Wow, uh, hundred. I was is, uh, wondering because the plane seemed to be going a little bit sideways, and it's because we got 115 knot wind to, uh, suit flow, suit at our side, directly at our side. Override. 115 knots. Not helpful. This is Apollo Control Houston, uh, seven hours, 15 minutes uh, now to the flight Apollo 12. Uh, we've had no conversation uh, with the Apollo 12 crew in recent minutes, uh, but we thought we would update our uh, Again, I skipped those minutes, altitude so. and uh, velocity readings uh, uh, from okay, our digital displays. Okay, we're getting displays. the windshield back. Uh, currently, we show an altitude of uh, 33,282 nautical miles, uh, velocity reading and uh, feet per second. That's uh, 10,309.4 feet per second. At uh, 7 hours, uh, 15 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. is out and uh, the probe is out. We'll stand by continuing to monitor at uh, 7 hours 18 minutes into the flight. If you uh, find any circuit breakers which are out of configuration, uh, would you hold up until we get TM before you change them? Sure, well, I'm not going to take them. I'm going to let Al come in here and do the uh, activation.
transport uh, Commander uh, Pete Conrad now in the lunar module. We're at uh, seven hours, 21 minute ground, minutes ground elapsed time. Uh, we now show an altitude of uh, 33,836 nautical miles, a velocity of uh, 10,215 uh, feet per second. This is Apollo Control Houston uh, standing by. I think this has to be like Ice Age legacy formations here. in the lunar module at this time. That was Al who reported things look real tidy. Pull up on uh, activating the S-band until we can uh, get the IU turned off down here. Okay. circuit breaker. That uh, lift off that circuit breaker was out. That's the way it was configured at the Cape. Uh, the change did not get into the uh, checklist, so there was no uh, change during flight. And we'd like you to go ahead and leave that circuit breaker out until we can uh, get power on the left. Okay, very good. And uh, we're in the middle of step 11 on Act 7 right now. Roger. Seven hours, uh, 31 minutes uh, into the flight Apollo 12. Commander Pete Conrad uh, and Alan Bean uh, continuing uh, with their checkout procedures in the lunar module. Presently, uh, we show a velocity of uh, 10,055 feet per second uh, for spacecraft Apollo 12 and an altitude of uh, 34,855 uh, nautical miles above the Earth. Seven hours or 32 minutes continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, Houston, we're going okay, over okay. on left power at uh, whatever GET it is right now. Roger, Pete, copy, you're going over. Okay. We presently read a GET of uh, 7 hours 36 minutes. Uh, that was uh, Commander Conrad identifying they're going over on limb power.
Intel Mu confirms uh, that uh, we're presently on limb power. Yeah, 122 knots. Really rough. Hey, Apollo 12. 12, go ahead. Hi, uh, Roger. Uh, you people looking at the quad B, it's up there at pretty good temperature, 170 degrees now. Roger, Dick. We'll look at it. Uh, okay, and if there's no reason why we can't start the PTC, unless you want to get this comp stuff, uh, I'll just hold here. All right, stand by on that, Dick. PTC is the passive thermal control, which is the spacecraft rolling in order to... It's a barbecue roll to uh, even out the temperatures. And of course, that relates to his other comment with the thruster being a little bit... Um, overheated so he's just saying maybe the PTC would help that I don't know that's uh, thruster quad I believe he was referring to So after this flight, the next stop will be Boston, and that'll of course be a shorter distance, but not shorter time. Okay, here's the we're checking the voltages on the batteries now. We got it on uh, battery one. We got 34 volts. At battery low level, two, we don't have much wind. Battery three, 34.2. Battery four, 34.2. Battery 5 is 37. Battery 6 is 37. Roger L, we copy 34, 34, 2, 34, 2, 34, 2, and 37 on 5 and 6. Roger, you probably ought to get 34, 2 to that first one, too. Roger. That was uh, Al Bean uh, reading off uh, battery voltages to uh, capsule communicator uh, Ed Gibson. We're at uh, 7 hours uh, 39 minutes now, ground elapsed time. We, we presently show a velocity of uh, 9,948 uh, feet per second. Altitude now reads uh, 35,564 nautical miles. This is Apollo Control Houston continuing to monitor. We're about to cross into Pennsylvania. We're basically clipping a corner of Pennsylvania around uh, Scranton.
I plan to land at uh, John F. Kennedy International. Uh, 12, that's negative. Uh, we're still reconfiguring to pick up that data. Oh, okay. We're standing by to uh, come up with the disky and we'll hold to get our data. Okay, Pete. Yeah, plan to land at JFK International. I figure that's the most appropriate. Given the Apollo side of things. Uh, switch to the wing tank. Okay, that's good. Roger, Pete, we copy. Well, that airport forward right should be something to do with Scranton, I think. Well, oh, Wilkes Bar Scranton. Yep. They used it as the uh, be reconfigured. We hate to use these batteries up. Pete, we got about another minute or two, and uh, if we can't make it by then, uh, we'll uh, not go on with it. What seems to be the problem, Houston? We're reconfiguring in order to uh, get that data. Yeah, we've been planning to do this for quite a while. We're more than two-thirds through the flight, so this will be a relatively short flight compared to the previous two. Depends how long I take to actually land, though. Twelve, Houston, uh, we're picking up some data from the LEM now. Stand by, we're looking at it. Okay, Houston, very good. And, uh, say. We've got, a, we've got a favor to ask you for our entertainment tonight. Raj, go ahead. Uh, you, you got the DSE tape, don't you, of, of the launch? That's affirmative, we have it. <laughs> well, I probably want you to play it for us tonight before we go to bed. We're still up here laughing over it, trying to remember all the things that we said and did. But we want to hear it tonight before we go to bed. You want to relive that twice in one day? <laughs> yeah, you better believe it. 
<laughs> that was uh, Pete Conrad asking uh, the ground if they could replay the uh, tape from this morning's launch to relive that moment. Seven hours, uh, 50 minutes, uh, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, getting to dusk. Well, sun sort of setting. Probably before I fly to Boston on the next flight, I'll advance time to morning. I don't mind night flying, but it's probably not the most interesting thing for viewers. Okay, I think it's safe to start descending now. Hey Houston, you ready for us for the LC, uh, LGC Disky Breaker? Twelve, that's affirmative. We're ready to go. That's negative. That's We've, uh, two on page uh, activation 27. That's a firm. Uh, that was uh, on activation 27. We had steps three through six. Roger. Okay, we're about to cross into New Jersey. So we're pretty close to New York now. Should probably thrall down more and descend a little bit quicker. Otherwise we're not gonna see the sights. I'm not doing any particular approach into uh, JFK. Not gonna look up all eighty airports this time. Pete, uh, we're not copying any computer data yet. Okay, well let's do a self check uh, just fine, uh, Houston. Uh... Roger, copy your self check. Look good. Okay, it's not complete yet, but it's uh, it's in the self check. Uh, we've got a two and a one, and we've been running for about uh, 50 seconds. Roger.
So again, this is the free uh, the stock 737 modified by Zebo, uh, the Zebo mod freeware okay, on the forums. Roger, uh, we picked up and been copying your uh, disky. And uh, Al, we've been uh, showing a high quad four temperature. We'd like you to go ahead and check the position of two circuit breakers on panel 11. Heaters RCS system AB1, quad four. And on panel 16, heaters RCS system AB2, quad four. Roger, the, all the circuit breakers are out. I guess it's because we haven't gone to PTC yet. Roger, Al. You ready for verb 74? Hey, Al, could you hold off on uh, verb 74? We're trying to pick it up on uh, another site. Roger, we're standing by waiting to give you verb 74. Now the game did give me an error on loading this craft, so there might be something wrong with it in terms of it being an accurate representation of the Zebo mod. Just a fair warning. Oh, funny sounds. Hey, I'll go ahead with the verb 74. Just this. Well, we've got the E mod. Okay, I understand you got that. That's the end. We're going to pull the disc breaker now and uh, power it out. Roger, L. Just pull the breaker. <laughs> Good old fashioned way of doing things. Now these fancy shutdown procedures. Roger, we copy. You're powering down. Now being uh, reporting they're powering down now. Every indication from the check, our uh, lunar module Intrepid looks good. Eight hours into the flight, uh, standing by, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Probably need that 3J FPS thing on as we approach New York. This is Apollo Control Houston, eight hours and two minutes into the flight. Uh, we currently show uh, Apollo 12 uh, with a velocity of 9,634 feet per second and an altitude of uh, 37,666 nautical miles. Eight hours and two minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston uh, standing by.
I can only imagine what exactly these sounds signify. Hope we get a good look at the city. We should be right over to Hudson now. Uh, Houston, uh Got anything else for us before we close up the lamp? Stand by on that, Pete. I'm trying to stay above 10,000 feet while I'm above 250 knots here. Pete, uh, go ahead yeah, and I'll it up. use the speed brake. It's time. Oh, we got some city. Houston, just check the impact angle on the docking here, and it's minus three tenths. Dick Coas must have been in there. Copy, minus three tenths. Well done. Yonkers right in front of us. Oh, well, a cloud right in front of us. Come on, Ed. Smile. You sat too serious down there today. And Manhattan downriver. Still thinking about your morning. We're doing our best to forget it. Apollo Control Houston, uh, eight hours and nine minutes uh, now into the flight. Apollo 12 uh, now shows an altitude rating of uh, 38,311 nautical miles and a velocity More rating of uh, 9541.6 feet per second. Continuing to monitor, uh, this is Apollo Control Houston. We're right down the Hudson right now. There we go. You can see Manhattan right there. Okay, Houston, the lamp hat. Pete, copy, you got it closed. And we got a few things for you uh, to pick up on the timeline when you're ready. Okay, let, let's give us about 10 here until we, uh, we still get Dick out of his gear and uh, we got to reconfigure. Let, let, let's get the probe and drove back in. Roger, will do. You heard that report uh, from Commander Pete Conrad uh, reporting that the emblem of cut the down on some of the features closed. right now. Conrad and uh, Albine having returned to the command module at this time. Eight hours, uh, 12 minutes. Uh, continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, uh, 
Crouch, Pete. Copy, you uh, got it all buttoned up. Hey, we're looking at you down there, Houston, and uh, now you're about the size of a uh, volleyball. Uh, Al, how far away is that volleyball? I say that volleyball's about two feet away. Good eye, Al. <laughs> I can't uh, see any uh, land mass at all. All I can see is water with lots of clouds. And I can see uh, sort of a glare point on the Earth. I assume that must be the uh, zero phase point to us. And other than that, it's uh, very, very bright. And another interesting thing is on the dark side, you cannot see where the Earth uh, stops and space begins. Uh, it's unlike the moon at, at night or in the daytime where you can see an Earth shine. You just can't see anything. Roger, Al. How come the old heads aren't giving us the same description? They're still worried about this morning. <laughs> they won't let us near the window. Still we worried about this morning. I now started picking up ice on my inner inside portion of the outside tab on window one and the SBY. I don't know what the blue building is. I think it's auto gen. <laughs> Okay, Pete, let's hear that one again. The, uh, you're picking up ice on the inside of the outside of the panel? No, on uh, uh, the window number one, the outside window has ice on the inside of it. In other words, between it and the inner window. Roger, Pete, we got it. People sometimes... And they weren't there uh, earlier. I don't know when they arrived. They went, I guess, a while ago. People sometimes act like SE to Ox saved that was the whole Pete, thing. Uh, Conrad reporting the uh, ice uh, between the window panes. Window uh, number one. I'd like they had no problems Earlier after you that. Heard a description uh, from Al Bean as uh, he viewed the Earth uh, from Apollo 12's present altitude of uh, 39,687 nautical miles. We now show a velocity of. Uh, Configuration on activation three and four, except for that utility circuit breaker. That's affirmative. Does the system test leader look okay to you? Uh, Black Jazz, Houston. I mean, SCE to Ox Velocity Hilt. Velocity now reads uh, 9349.8 feet per second. It gave data to mission control, but it was certainly not the end of the story. Stand by, Al. Eight hours, uh, 26 minutes uh, into the flight at this time. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Well, Statue of Liberty there. Ellis Island, of course. We show that the uh, current going over to the LEM is uh, oscillating as before, but it's uh, about one amp uh, higher on the mean. Okay. Sudden lighting change. What's that mean? Well, we don't really need to go up, do we? Give us another long pause, Pete, and we'll be back up. Let's see, that's a good look. I don't want to overdo it though, I need to figure out about landing. I'll take a runway 4 this time. I don't normally do that. Oh, we're going up too much. Probably time to take this a little bit more seriously. Uh, Roger. It, uh, I think it's about time I went to PTC. 
PTC, don't you? <laughs> He's been waiting for PTC for a long time Roger, now. Uh, that's affirmative, Dick. And uh, now that you're back in, out of the lamb and ready to pick up, why don't Oops, I give you uh, negative. some of the things we've been thinking about as far as a timeline. You'll be back on that nominal timeline when you uh, take the uh, primary evap, deactivate it after PTC. Huh. I just deployed my gear as far uh, as my PTC, buttons are like concerned. To, uh, disable quads alpha but and it didn't do that. Okay. All right. I'll just use G then. PTC referred to there. Table alpha, bravo. Uh, we've got a problem. PTC referred to there, uh, passive oh, it's uh, armed. thermal okay, control, good. or the uh, slow barbecue mode that... Uh, All right. Double click the, for that. Uh, no wonder it didn't module, work initially. Module, uh, go into uh, in route to, to the moon and uh, from the moon to uh, stabilize uh, thermal conditions outside the spacecraft. We're Great. at eight hours, uh, 30 minutes uh, now into the flight. Uh, we show an altitude uh, on Apollo now 12, I need wind 40, stream wipers. We're back to the windscreen wipers. Miles. And a velocity of uh, 9,200 and uh, 94.5 feet per second. Uh, this is Apollo Control Houston continuing to monitor. Okay. Uh, Over heat probe, wing ice, engine ice. Well, Circuit Houston. breakers, no. Go ahead, Houston. Would you. Uh, Go ahead and turn off hydrogen uh, tank one heater. That was over uh, there somewhere. Get us to do some okay, whatever. I can uh, see secondly, anyway. Uh, give us a readout of the service module RCS propellant quantity for all quads. Okay, uh, hydrogen tank one heater is off and two is remaining in auto. Quad A propellant uh, full scale high, 100%. Quad B full scale high, quad C full scale Oops. high, quad D full scale high. Not quite right. Roger, copy all full Spent scale that high. that time ooh, looking for the windshield wiper. I think we're okay now. Go, Com Control. Uh, Houston, we're going to go ahead and maneuver to uh, 090 and set up PTC. Roger, Dick. That was Dick Gordon uh, reporting that they, they would maneuver to uh, PTC attitude or passive thermal control attitude. Eight hours, uh, 32 minutes, now into the flight. Uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. They've been wanting to do PTC for ages now. Hello, Houston, we have a crowd press. O2 tank, two pressures a little low, it's about 800. Deck range, copy 800. And is that normal for that particular tank? Is that the one we've uh, we expected to have trouble with? Like the warning coming out before the heater? Stand by on that deck. Okay, well, let's see. Twelve, Houston, uh, had you gone ahead and uh, stirred both tanks? They uh, both look low at the One present time. Thousand feet stabilized, Mr. Perch out. We haven't done anything to them except leave the heaters on. We could give them both a fan cycle if you like. Stand by on that. Looks like I should actually be going for the right runway, but this one's longer.
Dale Easton, you can go ahead and uh, turn the fans on and get the pressure up. We're bringing them both on now, and I understand you're going to watch it for us. Roger, we're looking. Houston, go ahead. What's that tank doing? Yeah, give us a few pump. Tank 202. Really shouldn't be rolling at this point. 12 Houston, uh, we're showing on tank 1, 737, tank 2, 735, and they appear to be holding. Say that again, Houston. 12, we show on tank 1, 737, tank 2, 755. Roger, we're trying to figure out our south flight. Give us Omni Alpha. Omni Alpha. Twelve, go to Omni Alpha. Omni Alpha. Okay. I believe we have arrived at JFK International Airport in New York City. Oh, I've gone too far. Brakes. 80 knots. I was only using the thrust reversers because I don't get to use them very often. I should have probably used the brakes a little bit earlier. This is Apollo Control Houston. Uh, eight I was worried after bust the flight, apparently uh, busting the Apollo brakes on the Harrier. Uh, that uh, earlier report or exchange that uh, power uh, going into the limb uh, was I didn't even use before, the speed brakes. So like, oh, wait, I did. Higher. Take it back. Uh, two. Just did that automatically. Okay, I'm gonna pause the audio here. We'll pick that up the next time in the next video. I want to get taxiing a little bit. Do I have brakes on or not? Okay. Okay. So, as I figure out how to taxi this properly, I will leave you, and relatively short flight this time, next time might be a little bit longer, but I hope you enjoyed the flight from Toronto to New York in the 737, and I'll say thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did enjoy this video please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.